Welcome to a conversation platform to engage today's thought leaders in the world of business, including marketing, branding, social media, public relations, advertising, and writing in today's digital space. A discussion of current topics, new technologies, new tactics, new ideas, and new books. I'm your host, Randy Bowden. Tonight's guest, Jim Doherty, a former logistics officer in the U.S. Army who took that skill and handled operations for international shipping company as well as a big box jewelry manufacturer, stumbled into writing and digital uh, marketing when he uh, developed a strong interest in content and distribution. Those interests led to the creation and management of the very successful and popular digital marketing journal, Leaders West. Jim is also working on a startup to implement CMS sites for niche industries. A Seattle native, Jim lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. Welcome, Jim. I think you might have to uh, unmute yourself there, buddy. All right. I appreciate it, Randy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, sure. We're glad hey, to have you. I complain about the heat here in Cincinnati, but I imagine in uh, in Georgia it's even worse, huh? Yeah, we get that. We the, the the last several days we've been getting these little late afternoon pop up thunderstorms, and 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 it and they hit right before the um you know the sun goes down. So then you get another thirty minutes of sunshine, and so this the 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 steam adds to the already high humidity. It just doubles up on us. So it's, it's been See, rough. after you said that, I'm not going to feel sorry for myself again. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Jim, you you and I met. Um, well, uh, I started following uh, Leaders West uh, many years ago. Uh, our, uh, a couple of years ago, and started perusing through the uh, social web, and that was one of the uh, the sites that many of us uh, engage with. Um, and let's just start with with you know in the introduction, you said, "Hey, I, I, this was my interest; it caught my eye, and you know I started getting involved in that." How did you come about starting um, the original blog, Leaders West? Well. I, I started as a consultant, and what I was doing is the idea was that I was gonna, it was going to be an operations-based uh, consultancy. And what I found in Seattle is wasn't a lot of market for an operations-based uh, consultancy. And so, you know, so most of the people that I was connected with, uh, you know, looking for you're looking for ways that they could uh, increase their business. And social media seemed like a kind of a, a newer, a uh, little bit uh, oblique, kind of hazy, you know. Uh, field to, to look into and so I, I started getting involved really heavily in Twitter and seeing that people were you know and, and started following how people were doing their inbound marketing and that's when I started to use as a blog and, and it's obviously uh, evolved somewhat uh, you know so it, you know just probably like everybody I would imagine like you too you know it started started as, as one thing and kind of evolved into into what it is now and so so I I do but you know I do I don't do the majority of the writing anymore I mean, you have contributors like you we republish a lot of interesting, interesting stuff from people overseas, and a lot of the, a lot of the content I get are just connections that I have, you know, through Twitter or Google Plus. So, so really, you've taken you've taken a blog that was uniquely yours and developed it into a sharing platform to invite guest writers in. It's kind of a, I, I wouldn't say it's an it's an open platform, but it's you, you invite writers of any style that kind of bring something to the table and allow them to use that platform to populate their content on, right? Yeah, I, you know, the way that I see it now, I mean, I don't monetize it, so, uh, and, and you talked about me doing a startup, so I, I you know, I'm, I'm starting up a company, you know, that that's kind of specifically uses the, the you know, the, the knowledge that I've gained through, uh, through doing this inbound marketing and through social media channels, but, um, but really what I see it as now is it, it's, uh, it's grown it was really an experiment that grew to, you know, to have a, a pretty large, uh, pretty pretty large audience, and so, you know, I see this as an opportunity to expose, you know, people that don't have that that reach uh, to a greater audience, and and so it's it's been really neat from that perspective. I mean, I appreciate being able to to read people's uh, people's different you know different blogs and you know what people are writing about, and so it's 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 a, it's a privilege to be able to you know to, to take that you know to take that distribution and to be able to share. You know other people's content with it, and obviously, you know I learn about a little bit about what works and what doesn't work, and you know, and and really I, I focus in on the headline. So you know, can I can I re you know, can I reframe uh, an article with a with a different headline, maybe to you know to to increase the amount of click through that it gets, and 
and so I, I get to work you work a little bit around you know other people's content to, to you know do my own experimentation but um, but yeah hopefully the the people that contribute to the site you know just get a different get a different audience and get it you know introduced to more people because of their writing. You, you you publish two to three two to three uh, articles a day on, on Leaders West is that about right? Yeah, well, you know, I try to keep it within, uh, you know, Triber. Triber, I know, I think we're connected through Triber. Right. Um, you know, that's a huge, that's a huge platform for distribution. You know, so right. You know, so the opportunity to uh, to connect with all those people is is, uh, is really helped the distribution of the blog. This is actually the primary driver of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so I do try to keep it between, you know, between one and four. Um, and, and ideally, I think I'm going to get to the point where. You know, doing something similar to social media today or business to community, where you know we have a uh, we'll have a, a bunch of authors and we'll augment it with uh, with original pieces, but really have an RSS to be able to publish about four four articles a day, which is which is consistent with what Fiverr will let me do. You um, what what's been your? I know I know you just um went through the headache of 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 launching a new skin to the to the site so you relaunched it which looks very well it took on a, that new newer format um, had you was that the first improvement that you had made to leaders west since you since you launched it or major improvement that you made no you know i think i worked with a generic wordpress skin to begin with and then i upgraded to uh, to thesis which uh, you know which is a headache but it, you know but it's a really fast platform and uh, and, and really versatile, and, and and then I went to another another skin, which was just was was a little bit a little bit difficult to navigate, and I just came back to Thesis. So now I'm using Thesis 2.0, which is a which is a box oriented system, and it's got a whole whole different uh, uh, way of doing CSS and all that. So it's been a bit of a headache, but it's a really neat platform, and uh, it's been fun to kind of get in there and, and see what it has the capability of doing. And I think as I, as an object, you know, being able to place something in, in a specific spot. Um, you know, if, if you wanted to do something like that, I mean, this has, has been been great in, in terms of you know being able to target that. So. Um, we all, as as digital play, players in the digital space, realize the importance of content and the the current word of content marketing, which is not current; it's just a new buzzword that's been around. We've been you know generating content forever, but the um, the aspect of a brand who who is trying to to um, leverage content to build uh, authority and affinity with their brand. What do you think the challenges are for say say you know the typical small to mid sized business trying to trying to get into the content game? You know, I think uh, you know, just from my experience, businesses seem to be tend to be myopic. You know, so. Yeah, so if you're selling widgets, you have a tendency to want to talk about widgets all the time, and and um, you know we get, you know, if you're talking about widgets all day long, you know maybe it makes sense to do that, but really people don't want to talk about widgets all the time. So you really, I think the challenge for businesses is to find, you know, find a way to to uh, to diversify their content a little bit. I mean, be it by the types of content that they're putting out, by the authors that they're putting out. And, and by the topics that they're discussing, because everybody's discussing the same thing, it really it, it becomes quite monotonous. And so, um, yes, I, you know, I think for a local business, it, it you know, if it, if, you know, if you're local, I mean, it makes it very easy. And I think uh, I think a lot of businesses should be writing more about their locality because it has, you know, because it has a lot of benefits, you know, in terms of uh, search engine optimization and uh, you know, and, and once they get their social sharing uh, in place. You know, having having a network and be it Facebook or, or Google Plus that you know that that is somehow you know sent a social trigger for some kind of local content or whatever. I think that benefits the company a lot. And you know, and, and then for businesses that, that aren't geo specific, then you know, it, then it, it makes it a little bit more of a challenge. But you know, but really, I think that just our tendency to talk about what we do all day long, you know, and, and think that think that people are going to be interested all the time. I think that's a you know that's a that's a big challenge for, for everybody. Yeah, instead of how um, somebody might be using their widget in a in a in a you know in a helpful way or a, a way that maybe another customer hasn't used it, telling that story or bringing a customer testimonial to 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 play in there. I think a lot of businesses tend to tend to you know keep the guard up and and try to control their content and don't want 
you know, some kind of outside voice coming in a lot of times. You talk in your in your voice a lot of the stuff that you write, Jim. I, I appreciate very much the style that you give. It's kind of a uh, more of a uh, thought provoking. You don't really say, "Hey, this is this is it." You develop a you know you, you develop a thesis and throw it out there and 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 then listen to the listen to the debate afterwards. Um, talk about that style and the various styles that you see out there that how that works for you. I mean it's 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 awful and I, I appreciate that and, I, and a lot of times that's I guess that's kind of how I approach the subject. I don't I don't pretend to be an authority on anything. I, I tend to share experiences and and observations. So talk about that a little bit. Well, there's a um, there's a book that I, I read recently. It's uh, The Signal and the Noise by Nate Silver. I don't know if it Nate Silver did the, uh, did the the New York Times blog on uh, you know uh, predicting predicting what states were going to go to to which presidential candidate or whatever, and he's calculating the odds. And and uh, and one of the things that he said was that uh, you know that a pundit, you know, what what makes for a good pundit is that you're just very deliberate and, and very uh, you know very sure of yourself all of the time. And and pundits uh, are oftentimes really wrong. And so I, I think I'd be a poor pundit, but. Um, you know, but but I, I, I try to take both sides. I, I try to see things from all sides because I don't think, you know, I think when people make absolute statements about, you know, about social media or how people should be using it or how businesses should be using it, uh, you know, what platforms they should be using, or you know, I, I think I think we have a tendency to be very competitive and uh, and and you know sometimes you know sometimes very you know think that things or rules are very sacrosanct, but um, you know, but there's so many people out using social media and and using you know and and using blogs for different things, or so many different products, you know, so many different verticals that, um, you know, I think it's, it's, I think it's dangerous to, you know, to make an assumption that that one thing is going to be attributable to another. And so, you know, so you know, it hasn't always been that way uh, in terms of what I've written. But but what I try to do is I try to find, I try to find research that people have done, and and uh, and and try to present that research in the, you know, in the fairest way that I can, you know, so that I can help inform decisions. But I, you know, but like I said, I, I think that. The, the most common objection that I'll get to to something that I'll write, you know, be it some something that's study based or whatever, is, you know, it, it didn't happen for me that way. And and I think that you know we have to acknowledge that, you know, that, that yes, you know, you, you can get you can get deliberate, you know, ROI on social media, or you can, uh, you know, you, you can do this or that, or you know, you can you can build up a business on feed or something like that, right? Um, you know, but but trying to apply that. You know, to every business, you're going to have the challenges, and, and I think that's, you know, that, that's kind of a disconnect for some people. You know, so it's what separates punditry from, you know, from from people like you or I that might be, might try to try to be a little bit more uh, neutral. Yeah, I, I try to be objective. I guess I, 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 my type A does come out. I guess every now and then. But one of the things that uh, I, I, it's funny to me, with, you know, I picked up on this what you were saying. You know that, that especially in the social media sphere, there's this, um, you know, all this influence stuff that started and whatever. And then the, you know, I'm an expert. And wait a minute, there's no experts. There's nobody. Is that? It's too new. It's in its infancy, and and all that. And you can't be an expert. But you see so many people saying, "Hey, I know how it's done. This works for me, and 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 I can show you how to do it." You know. And that, and then you turn around, and you challenge. Wait a minute, if you're, you know, that sounds like you're an expert authority on that. It's like, <laughs> you know, show me. Well, no, there. I don't call myself an expert in it, but I know how it works. You know. So I always get a chuckle out of out of that because I try to. You know, it's kind of like the, um, and, and I want to go into some of these platforms, but it's kind of like the uh, the Instagram Vine debate that erupted this past week. You know, one, one's going to knock one off real quick. And, I mean, it was the day of the announcement, Vine, you know, RIP came up for, for Vine. You know, it was it was gone. You know, and I, I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. I think there's, there's probably, you know, something something there or something that's too many people already doing some good stuff with it and and things like that so it, it, it will see so what do you see for that you know when you say using these various platforms I mean uh, and you 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 tend to delve into the the research about what is actually working like a Facebook uh, thing and, and as you say it, it might work for you know, company A, but that doesn't mean that company B is going to apply those same principles. So it's not going to be apples to apples. What do you What do you see as far as the platforms going? Just say, let's say the 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 the, the write off of Google Plus 
uh, you know, a year ago, and what happened with Facebook and the the resurrection that's going on with Google right now, or or let's just say the slow growth that 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 Google has experienced over the last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think both platforms have really uh, evolved over the past year. Um, you know, so it would have been, uh, you know, so about a year and a half ago when uh, it was a year and a half ago when Facebook did their, or may have been, may have been last October, it was last October when Facebook yeah. did their their edge rank al algorithm change. Um, you know, it, it really, you know, for businesses on Facebook, I mean, I think that the promise that the Facebook is going to be a free platform to be able to market on, just, I mean, is a fantasy at this point. I mean, you really. I mean, you have to be uh, you have to be spending dollars on Facebook, or uh, you know, yeah, I and mean, you really have to be spending dollars on Facebook in order to get that reach. I mean, because some of the some of the statistics that came out of there, you know, Facebook focuses on the average, but you know, but when you take a look at the median, you know, so so half of people are getting you know getting reach in the single digits, so half of pages are getting reach in the single digits, and that's not, you know, you've acquired all of these fans, but really the, there's cost to to reach all of them, you know. So I think. Facebook has really changed in a in a very deliberate way to, you know, to, to monetize that that advertising product, and I think that you know I think brands need to realize that. Um, you know, not to say that people couldn't people can't do it, um, but but it's changed. You know, Google Plus, it, you know, Google Plus is tough. I mean, because uh, because Google Plus falls under that Google URL, um, so it's really difficult for anybody to track what's going on. So you have a couple of studies here saying that you know Google Plus has surpassed Twitter in terms of size. And then you've got, I think, Nielsen that you know that says you know Google Plus people are spending six months or six minutes a month on Google Plus, which is up 100 percent from last year. But you know, but it was kind of dwarfed by Facebook seven hours. And so I always, you know, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I try to play, try to be agnostic about the about the platforms. But for me, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I compare it to Pascal's wager. So you know, so so Pascal, you know, in his you know he's trying to explain to you know to to scientists why. You know why why God exists, and and he just used a no argument. You know what if God doesn't exist, or what if God does exist? You know then not believing him is going to you know doom you to all this you know gloom and doom. Well, you know well, well Google has the you know no matter what you think about social, I mean Google search is is better for better for customer acquisition and for advertising. And so um, so if you believe that Google Plus is going to uh, to inform organic search and is going to you know is going to be helpful for uh, you know, for paid search, and, and may grow into, you know, may grow into a, a, a bigger product, which I think there's evidence that it will be. Then, you know, then I think businesses have to take Google Plus seriously as well. So, you know, so even not knowing precisely what's going on with any one of these platforms, I mean, I think there's an argument to be made for anyone. But you know, so long as you're pragmatic about it and, and kind of understand, you know, the, the pluses and minuses of it. Yeah, Facebook. You know, Facebook came on like a storm, still is, and then um, in the business space out there, you know, everybody was first. It was the personal thing. You got to have a Facebook page or whatever. Then a business, business, it's a place for every business that's got to be there. And and it was this panacea painted that you know you're gonna just make a lot of money. Or in 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 my mind, it was really if I was a you know some little business you know, in my city working over here, I didn't really pay that much attention, but I kept hearing it, you know, and, and then I kept hearing, well, it's free and you're doing all this stuff. And they, they, and at the same time, you're going to make money. Well, let me give it a try. And then, you know, no one ever really painted the true, you know, expectation that, well, wait a minute, you got to cultivate, you got to, you got to grow, you got to be there. And it's, and it's not a panacea, you know, it's, if you treat, if you're treating it that way, um, you know, you're going to be very disappointed. Now, to me, today, I mean, everybody, you want, you know, a business is looking for for conversion. So, hopefully, they've got a website. And the website, the the Google platform, anything that you can do in that Google platform is going to help you wind up on the top of the search. Or that's the idea behind it. So, I would focus on that more. I'm not I'm not saying anything wrong against Facebook or whatever. I think though that a lot of people have been dealt a wrong idea about it and that's that's created a lot of um, backlash with with Facebook and then then Facebook does you know their their bait and switch which I never considered it was a bait and switch I always considered it when when it started talking about business at some point in time they got to make money you know and yeah. especially when the IPO came out they've got to make money so um, you know whatever they do is fine with me uh, it's it's free access. I just got to figure out how it'll work for for myself and my clients. You know, so I, I think it'll be interesting to see how people are using graph search. So 
you know, so if a business can generate a lot of social signals around a, a product, a local product or something like that, then, you know, then I can see where, you know, where there might be some, some benefit if people start using graph search in order to search for products and services. Um, you know, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it really just, like I said, it really just depends on the product or the business, you know. Yeah, Gla Glass could throw a big, big wrench in it because really with m mobile, mobile just hasn't, you know, it hasn't even got out of the blocks yet. So many things that, that are available that are that have been discussed that you've seen, the research that's coming and things that can happen with a smartphone in hand with a retailer or a business out there. There's so much that that can be done that hadn't happened and then here comes glass something, you know, glass project or something like that, a technology that I mean it, it, it there's just so many things going on out there. It's really hard as a marketer to kind of keep your eyes around it, let alone some small businesses trying to, you know, gain a little bit more market share and, you know, ink something out a little bit. That's, well, that's difficult. I, I think Google Glass will be interesting, uh, you know, because I was the most excited about the um, uh, the augmented reality aspect of it. So the fact that you can go by a business and, and see an offer in your screen or something like that, I, I thought that'd be huge. I mean, you got apps like Highlight and maybe Foursquare that haven't been able to achieve that real-time advertising delivery. Uh, and I, and I, th I thought that would be, you know, that'd be the, one of the biggest uh, draws for Glass, but uh, my wife saw a presentation on it uh, a couple weeks ago or something like that. Just, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what they're going to be able to do with, with that particular screen. And obviously Google's not the only one, you know, working on a, working on a, a wearable, wearable product like that too. So. Uh, so it'll be interesting. You know, it's good to be good to be agnostic about products and platforms when they're changing as quickly as they are. Yeah, I'm waiting for, and I know it's probably in the in the next year's models. But the car, you know, when you're when you're driving down the the interstate and your gas gauge is you got like five miles left of gas, and it says, "Hey, you're you're fixing around like gas in five miles, and there's a gas station three miles. It's your last choice. You better turn <laughs> off." <You know? laughs> <laughs> so I mean I know that I know that's still on the on the drawing board to happen, which is is, is a welcome thing to all of us. Sure it's making us sure it's, it's making life very uh comfortable, but sure it's making us lazy, I guess. You know, well just, Google's got the self driving car coming out sometime, you know, and, and I'm excited for that because I because uh, 'cause I'm sick of driving. <laughs> you are, you I, gonna sit in the back seat and trust you gonna trust Google to, to take you to the theater or something like that. Say say run me down to the local windows. Oh, I have, you know, when we go when we go on the weekend, my wife always lets me drive, and so she'll sit there, and you know, the kids will have their tablets, and, and you know, she'll sit there and get a you know get a few chapters of a book read while I'm sitting there uh, driving. So uh, you know, so I, I think it's it's time Google gave me my gift. <laughs> well, tell me what what um what do you think about the the younger generation um, coming up? Um, total, total, total digital. I mean, what do you think about that? And and uh, you know, my generation. You know, I I was at work when they set the first computer on, on a desk at the company I was working for. I mean, when we when we first got the first PCs. So I, you know, I've seen that that age come about. But you know, the younger generation of today. You know, my daughter growing up in that time with a you know with with a cell phone or now tablets or something, you know, the tablet, the tablet for an infant is the new magazine, you know, they don't mm -hmm. even see that. What do you think of that? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's going to be really intriguing to see the digital natives and how they, how they, uh, you know, how they, how they consume and, and where they go. I mean, I, I really think it's going to be kind of a, a sea change. Uh, so to the cat, Kathy Savitt is a, is a Seattle, uh, she's a Seattle native, I think, but she was a, she started Locker. She worked for Amazon. Now she's the CMO at Yahoo, and, and she's kind of an she's an expert in in, uh, in, in what they call Generation Z, so it's digital negative uh, uh, generation. And in a lot of things that she said really got me interested in, you know, in that particular generation. So some people focus on the millennials and all that, and I don't think that you know from a, a consumption from a consumption standpoint, from the internet standpoint, I'm not sure that they're so much different than you know maybe Generation X and stuff like that, but. But the digital natives, she says, are different because they, because they consume from all over the place. So it's not that they'll, they, you know, so they're not, they're not uh, brand loyal. You know, they're going to be uh, item specific loyal. So, you know, so they've got these, uh, these options, you know, from Amazon.com or from the fancy or, or, or from, from some of these, you know, from, from some of these retailers where they can just kind of pick and choose, you know, what they want from all over the place. And, you know, and, and from a brand standpoint, I mean, that's very disruptive. 
And then what they're doing on uh, what they're doing in social media is interesting too. I mean, so the the extent that they're that they're texting, I think, is really interesting. So how that will how that will manifest, uh, you know, when they're when they're old enough to get their smartphones. So I think a third of kids have smartphones, but they spent most of their time texting and they send a thousand texts a month a month or something like that. You know, so how they uh, you know so how that translates into a social behavior, uh, I think, is very interesting as well as the platforms that they're using. So it looks like they're very uh, very kind of into Facebook, but also, uh, you know, but also they, you know, but also Tumblr is a big, uh, is a big, you know, social platform for them. And, uh, and, I, and I don't think it's a mistake that, uh, you know, that Javits at Yahoo and that uh, Yahoo just acquired Tumblr. So, um, you know, so, so they're definitely making a place for that digital, for those digital natives. Now, you know, now whether people will stay at Tumblr and Tumblr will continue to grow to the extent that it is, I mean, that, that'll be, That'll be interesting because it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit different than you know than a traditional social network. Did, did did have you seen in that age group? Was there a um, was there a migration away from texting into maybe the Facebook platform, and then the proliferation of Facebook with the older demographic coming in, and they migrated back, or that they, they stayed there? What what have you found in, in, in looking at that? You know, I, I've never seen anything that kind of that, that married the two, and so I, I think that the two behaviors are different. I, I don't know that anybody's been able to to see what happens when you know when somebody's been sending a thousand texts a month, you know, kind of graduates to the smartphone. Are they are they uh, using Facebook? Or whatever. Pew put out a good study maybe last month about about teenagers and, and Facebook, and and what they found is that uh, that more teenagers are using Facebook than they expected. You know, so they. They don't like Facebook. I mean, they're disappointed with Facebook, but they're there, and uh, and they are, um, you know, and, and they're using the platform with the same with with the same uh, enthusiasm that you know that other generations are. In fact, they have they have more friends on Facebook. Um, you know, what they're doing is they're coding their language. I mean, so they're friends with their mom and their grandma and their and their neighbor, and so the ways they communicate with the different social you know social circles is they code their language on Facebook. You know, so it's, so it's, what was interesting to me about that particular study was just, you know, I, I assumed that there would be a movement away from Facebook. I mean, there, you know, so much disparaging, you know, information and, and thought about Facebook, and it seems like it's got a it's got a stranglehold on on that particular generation too. I mean, once you once you have 300 and some friends there, um, you know, it's it's difficult to go away from that that particular place where you have all those connections when you don't have those connections someplace else. What do you think of the um the 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 video aspects, the vines and the Instagram, the picture thing I've got, but the video. Do, do you? I mean, because that's the 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 stop motion short form video is kind of new to the new to the space. What do you? How do you think that's been embraced? And, and then I guess maybe talk about the the if you know about the Snapchat um, uh, platform uh, and what you've seen on that. Uh, you know, I I used Instagram video for the first time. Yesterday at my daughter's ballet recital, um, and you know, and it's kind of neat how you can filter it and all that. But I really don't. I don't have a sense of. I, I mean, I know that I know that Vine's being used quite a bit, and it's, you know, it's been really and people are really creative with kind of the stop motion stuff. And so, yes, you know, so I think it's been very popular for that standpoint, and and uh, I'm sure Instagram will be too. But I don't. I don't really have a feel for you know for what's better than another. I mean, I I kind of assume that they're you know that they're platform specific. So if you've got a huge community on Twitter, then you're going to be using Vine to. To share your stuff, and, and you know, and, and if you're really into Instagram, then you probably be sharing stuff like that on, on Instagram, and, and and maybe there's some spillover to Facebook. I don't know, but uh, I don't have a sense for that. Uh, Snapchat, on the other hand, it, I know it's popular with college kids, um, you know, and and it's uh, you know, and it, I, I mean, I, I think it's a little bit more, a little bit more more nuanced than just uh, you know, the people give it credit for. I mean, you have the capability to write over your your pictures and all that, and and uh, you know, and the fact that they disappear I mean, seems to be a little bit of a novelty. Although there's some, I think there's some indications they stay on your phone. And they definitely stay on Android phones, and some security <laughs> group is trying to figure out how, where they get stored on iPhones too. So, so they're really not disappearing. But uh, you know, but I, I guess I've, I've I've heard a bunch of interviews with uh, you know college kids that are using it, and and uh, you know, it's not it's not simply a you know just I think I think you got written off as kind of a sexting type of deal and or sexting type of platform and and really it's become this way for people to people to to communicate with the closed loop but I've never been able to use Snapchat because I can get nobody in my age group to use yeah it. I, I, my, I've got some my wife's got some um, some 
10, 11, 12, 13 year old cousins, that's mm -hmm. all they do. Yeah. That, I mean, that's how they talk. They talk all they text and Snapchat. That's it. They've got Facebook, they've got all that, but that's, I mean, they're constantly using that, so I, you know. Yeah, I, I think there's something in the platforms that are that are kind of closed, you know, these closed networks, because uh, was it, uh, Stephen Wolfram had a study a few months ago, and he, so what, what so Wolfram, uh, is, he's the person who started Wolfram Alpha, Alpha, which is a, you know, it's a search engine for algorithms or, or some, some such, and, and I'm probably getting that wrong, I just don't use it, but, um, uh, but he, he collected a bunch of Facebook data, so people that use the platform uh, gave him their Facebook data, and he's able to analyze it, and he saw that you know, people have three or four distinct social circles, you know, all within the same uh, age group on Facebook. You know, and so, you know, so, you know, if you're connected to that many people, you have to imagine that you're not gonna, it's going to be very difficult to leave it. But also, you know, when you talk about people having having stress over what they're posting on Facebook, it's because, you know, because they want to be posting things that are congruent to all the different circles. And so, you know, so I, you know, I, I imagine that probably for younger people that are much more, you know, much more comfortable with all of the social media stuff that, you know, that having that closed network is a, uh, you know, is a benefit and probably, and probably stuff like Snapchat or, so, uh, you know, other, other platforms like Snapchat that are, that are kind of niche and maybe a little bit more closed and, and not, not as available for mass consumption will pop up. Well, I'll, I'll throw this in as a, um, as a, as a differentiator between Instagram uh, video and Vine. And I had this thought and then, then Ann Hanley on her, her personal blog wrote about it, but there, I, I worked a, a while with a production company, you know, we we're constantly producing 15 second spots. That's what you use. You know, you call them bumpers, uh -huh. uh, ten and fifteen second bumpers, and and th there's tons of those out there, and all they are is advertisements. So, you know, everybody's got those. Mm -hmm. So, what what's going to happen is, you know, all the brands are going to figure out, hey, just repurpose that, put that on there, right. and they'll fill, they'll be able to fill that. In instead, with the stop motion on Vine, where you're creating something new, and some of these brands like. Lowe's, some of these, if you if you haven't seen that, Lowe's is doing these little tips like take a rubber band and wrap it around this and it shows it in a stop motion thing. It's a helpful tip, you know, it's cool as anything, but they're being very creative. Whereas I can see where Instagram, because they've got, you know, X amount of followers, they can just load that thing up with, with already branded commercial applications mm -hmm. that could you know, drive people away. So and we'll see how that, how that flushes out. I, well, I just have know, some I, aspects of that. Yeah, it's all rather new, but my my assumption is that Vine's going to increase their increase the you know the number the time. Yeah, and they had said that, that you know. It's that, not that, a, that. You know, I, I you know if that becomes an issue, I, I'm sure it will. I mean, but but that's an interesting insight about uh, about you know brand content being repurposed in in the Instagram. Yeah, I've got. I mean, I got hit up with it as soon as they launched. I know a company called me and said, "Man, we've got all these bumpers. We can just start throwing. How how do we get them on there?" And I went, "Man, that's real easy." <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're already looking at that. I mean, it's, you know, people approach it with caution, but we'll see. I mean, I know that, you know, some of that stuff is ex even even what I've seen people do on the Instagram. I mean, the first stuff that I saw on Vine was, you know, as people cartoonish doing something. This is my first thing or whatever. But some of them are just amazing what they can do with that stop motion, you know, and and very creative. And it's not. It's not necessarily just uh, millennials or, or, or younger. It's it's everybody's on there doing some great stuff. So um, I like seeing that. It's, it's exciting to me. What else do you see on the horizon that that um, I mean? You know, you talked about Google Glass and opportunities with that. Um, what kind of issues do you see? Any downside issues that that maybe with this privacy thing that's going on or anything like that 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 we need to be, I mean, you know, with, with, with what was, what's going on with everybody, just like we were talking about Snapchat doesn't it disappear, and then this NSA controversy going on and all that, what do you think about those kind of implications with where we are as a consumer and user out there put ourselves in? I think Universal McCann did a study, it's called the Wave 6 study, and I think that they ended it last year, but it's a, it's a widespread international uh, study of social media users, and, and, what they found, you know, so it's international, so they got different countries, and they found country by country, you know, some some countries cared more about privacy than others, and the United States is right on the brink. I mean, they, 
you know, it seems like you know, it could go either way. But but really, um, you know, the assumption I make about privacy is that uh, you know, depending on depending on what you know what's there at the end. I mean, Facebook could could almost do anything, you know, and and people would still use it. I mean, because the you know, or they could put whatever they want in those terms of service, and and they kind of have, you know, and they they repurpose your your likeness to sell other products and all that. And, you know, so it, you know, it's taking a lot of liberties with that, and and I, you know, people have people have you know some objection, but you know, probably don't see it, and and probably kind of you know, it's probably part of the course. And so I think we're I think we're kind of uh, I think it's become a little bit numb to it, and and you know I don't I don't see people making a big stink over over privacy issues. I mean whether that would be the right thing to do or not. So, um, you know, so I, I don't I don't see that being a, a big impediment to the social social media. I'm mean, curious to know. I I think is it I think this month Facebook is supposed to start doing full page autoplay video advertisements. You know, so I'd be interested to see. You know, I mean they see they continue to push the envelope in terms of you know, in terms of the advertising products that they get, and so or that they present and they offer to people. So I think it costs a brand a million dollars to run that a day. Um, you know, so so be interesting if that becomes a you know if if people are are kind of neutral to something like that, then you know what happens. You know, it, it's rumored that Twitter Twitter's going to go uh, public this year. And, you know, and and really that's the aspiration for any one of these uh, social networks is to is to monetize the points that they've gone, you know, that they go public, and so. Uh, you know, so so really, I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be interesting how far they can push the envelope in terms of advertising products. Um, I think I read where that 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 Facebook uh, experiment was getting pushed out a little further into the fall. Maybe I think they. Uh, I, I might be wrong, but I think I read that this week. Yeah, or I think it's supposed to happen this month. So if it hasn't, then yeah. yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that kind of excites me is is. I tried to go paperless, um, I don't know, f three or four years ago and started migrating to all digital stuff and, and, and using less and less paper and doing away with roll of deck, things like that, you know, and working solely off my telephone and and uh, this 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 cashless thing that, you know, with Square and, and, and Google Wallet and all that, that, that to me is very exciting. Um, and I guess what I see is, I mean, I'm, you know, I guess if I were talking to my parents, they still are very paranoid about sharing a credit card in that space, and I just approach it kind of wide open now. I don't really think about. It. I was on I was on one of these Google Hangouts a live one not too long ago, and somebody on the thing said something about, well, you know, we're, this this is private held, right? And they went, no, you clicked on a you know a, yeah. an acknowledgement when you when before you signed on, didn't you read that? And they went. I clicked on some, but I didn't read it. I think that goes to to what you said. But nobody ever reads any of that stuff and realize what you did. Well, it's interesting when you talk about privacy. You just brought up credit cards. I read something recently where, you know, with the amount of data that they have on you as a consumer is is so vast that that they can narrow down whether you're a credit risk or you know whether they should just be piling credit onto you based upon certain products that you buy. You know, and so you know, so when we when we talk about social media and and you know. Uh, you know, was it Graph Search is a great example of um, of how how few social signals we really have about our preferences. Um, you know, just because just because it's so poorly populated, if you're looking for anything specific, I mean, but those credit card companies have all of that data and and really you know have this have this vast warehouse, probably something that that will will never be matched by you know by by social networks in general, just because you know they're capturing it. Your day-to-day -day purchases and stuff like that. So, you know, so when you look at look at privacy in the in the in the grand picture, I mean, really, Facebook and and Google are, are dwarfed to a lesser extent by you know by these consumer agencies that, that have captured everything that you bought from the from the time that you had a debit card or credit card. Yeah. Yeah. One of the best databases out there is AARP. They they know where you're living. And they know the day that you turn 50 because that's the day that it shows up in your mailbox. Everybody <laughs> I've ever met really? has had a 50th birthday. It happened to me. It, I mean, it was actually on my birthday. It's, it, boom, it, get, it shows up in your mailbox. I mean, and you talk to people and they go, how do they know that? I'm like, well, you know, it's all they've been collecting that. They've got a, they know, they know where their next crop is coming from. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're data mining it. It's just another example of how, you know, we treat everything with social media like it's new. And it's really, it's really not, you know. I mean, a lot of, 
you know, a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that you know, a lot of the growing things that people are going through with social media and how to market on these different social platforms are really, uh, really just kind of different forms of interruption marketing that you know the people have been doing forever. And so, you know, so it's, it's kind of it's you know it's the kind of new tools, but you're really reinventing the wheel in terms of you know in terms of the content that's going out there, in terms of how we're you know how how people are interacting with one another, and and you know just how people are how people are using these and viewing these different tools to be able to, to market their products. Yeah, it's exciting to me. I love I love to see the the changes, but it's just kind of like what we talked about at the top of the the program. You know, content has been around. I mean, people have been doing doing content marketing. I think I shared that article tonight about you know John Deere started uh, you know their their their. Uh, their little magazine to entice farmers to make them be better farmers, you know. So they were feeding, feeding information. This is how to do. This is how to plant this. What did this do? This, you know, plot, plot this, you know, insecticide or whatever, you know, harvest on this time. But you know, they weren't. They were in the machinery business. They were right. just to sell machines, so they were making their lives better, you know. And that's that's kind of interesting. I I, uh, uh, I I was with a, a client. And we went to Case Knives, uh, an event, and and I was talking to the historian for Case Knife Company, and she'd been working for him for for many years, and she shared with me. And anybody that's ever gone to a swap shop or an antique shop or anything knows that Case Knives are collectors items, right? I mean, that's that's what they they do. You see them around. Some people have that. They they give them away as swag. Company has some big celebration. Say John Deere has a big celebration. They'll get a case knife and then give it out to all their employees or whatever. But she said that that company case was not even aware of that until like 15 years ago. They had not ever captured that story uh -huh. and 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 you use that content to bring you know that into their business and into their storyline. Right. And 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 then two, the thing about it was, it was it was a it, the company was still those knives are actually made still made hand by hand. Really? It's today, yeah. The guys. Wow. I mean, she was telling. I mean, this is just this. Uh, yeah, this past January when I had the meet and talking about how they're polishing and all that and everything. So it's this traditional old style company, which is a pretty iconic brand in that knife knife world, you know, but it was kind of fascinating to me, you know. I mean, here's stuff that's going on about a brand on the out. It's kind of like Coca-Cola. I mean, there's all these Coca-Cola collectors and all that, but Coca-Cola learned early on to start, you know, capturing that. They've got a museum here in Atlanta that's just unbelievable that, you know, that they've curated all that stuff from, from families who've, 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 died or whatever and they've given it back to Coke and they just they hold on to them. I mean they've got a, a repository just full of that kind of stuff. And I guess if they ever needed the money, not that they not that Coca-Cola would ever need any money, but if they ever needed money they got plenty to uh to sell to the auction house. <laughs> <That's eBay>. Yeah. <laughs> so what else what else is going on as far as research, um Jim? What do you what else do you think? I mean what 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 do you think that you see um, back to back to writing techniques. We all we all walk in the same uh, trail a lot. Talk about content. We talk about Facebook. We talk about this. Um, we dissect it. We dissect it. We dissect it. What are we going to be dissecting six months from now? Do you th what do you think? I probably think stuff. You know, I, I I don't know. I don't know. You know, I I mean, it's, I think it's a good it's a good uh, Mindset to kind of take it as it comes, but you know, we're really, yeah. I mean, I I've just gone through the process of looking back over over past you know content, and you know, and I'll look back to other people's blogs, and really, you know, we're talking about the same stuff. I mean, some stuff pops up, but really, you know, I don't I don't see anybody challenging Facebook. I mean, so whatever changes on Facebook is what we're going to be talking about. Twitter will probably go public, and, and you remember all of the, you know, the 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 ramp up to that. You know, that happened maybe a year, year and a half ago, where they cut off all the developers and. You know, made them, uh, you know, kind of kind of cut off access to their API. Um, you know, I think it'll be interesting how Facebook integrates Instagram, and you know, and it'll be interesting. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, tw Twitter's rolling out the the music platform and stuff. So you know, so it seems like all of these different platforms are trying to you know trying to have a bunch of different you know content available there. You know, to to some 
you know, and they're successful one to one degree or another. But um, you know, but really, I mean, I, I you know, I don't I don't see too much of the landscape changing. I mean, I think I, I think Google Plus is poised to continue to grow. I think I think there's room for Twitter to grow. I I don't necessarily understand why you know microblogging is so big. You know, uh, you know, in, in Japan, for instance, and you know, so 50 or 60 percent of people are, are you know use Twitter or something like that there where you know, where 20 percent or 15 percent use it in the United States. You know, so you know, so there, so there are all kinds of different regional specific you know you know quirks you know that that you know that are interesting. But you know, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really about how how you know how are we able to communicate through these platforms to you know to reach people and how you know what are we able to do to do that and yeah and I and I feel like it's I, I feel like there's some you know when you when you brought up the the point of, of case knives and Coca Cola you know I, I don't think we look enough to the past to you know to find you know to see see where those lessons are and see where you know see see how people are, how writers are able to make a connection with people you know before and and so you know so there's a sense that you know, it's kind of Groundhog Day, and we're reinventing the wheel a lot. You know, when we talk about content. You know, when when people are kind of starting out, and people are so sacrosanct about you have to do this or you have to do that. It, it you know, it, it um, you know, it really does feel, yeah, you know, it feels somewhat like you know, it's really are trying to you know treat us treat this you know like this whole whole new you know entity. You know, where, where there really are a lot of rules of old entities, and you know that would apply to it. So, you know, so I, I expect we'll still be talking about the same stuff six months from now, you know, with, with a few, with a few changes. I, I, you know, I, my opinion is that I don't think Facebook is going to go anywhere for, you know, forever. I mean, it really, I think it's going to go the route of Yahoo where, you know, where, where it's just, you're so in, ingrained into it. I mean, you, you got 300 connections in four different social circles. It, it's just, it, it's, you know, if you can't get that connection to people anywhere else, you know, it's really difficult to switch to something else. You know, unless everybody's switching at the same time, and you know, and I just don't see that happening. So I think what'll happen is the younger generation, you know, may you know may not use Facebook, and it may just become something like a, a Microsoft or Yahoo, where the value of it is really, you know, or the the user usership just kind of continues to get older and older and older. You know, and, what is your what is your in your mind, what is your number one platform that you enjoy interacting with the most? You know, I, I love Twitter just because, uh, you know, because it, I, I, you know, I, I tried to think about why it would be, but I think it, it was the third-party tools, you know, and so, you know, I, I really, I want to, I want to get more involved in Google Plus, and I, you know, I see the value of communities, I see that a lot of people are using it, but, you know, but really, you know, being able to go into a tool like Manage Twitter or Social Bro, and, um, and you know, and, and use those to manage manage Twitter, is, you know, or even Hootsuite is is really valuable and. Uh, you know, and, and I appreciate being able to do that because of the efficiency that it gives me. You know, and uh, you know, and I think, you know, I, I, and I think that's that's why I like it. But I, I try to be agnostic about it too. I mean, you know, if everybody leaves Twitter, it's, you know, it's, it's, there's probably not a lot of point to be there. So, you know, so I try to keep the eye on the ball and and uh, you know and you know check in on other platforms from time to time. But, but yeah, I mean, I, Twitter's the most fun for me. I, you know, I just uh, it, it it always has been and. And uh, you know, and, and I'll I'll switch when the time comes, I suppose. But that's that's primary. I mean, how about you? It seems like you're really, you know, uh, you really kind of embrace Google Plus. Is that is that? Well, I would say my, my I'm I'm with you. Twitter is Twitter is my fun. I, I like Twitter. Though. I mean, I, I I watch it the most. I get the most news from it. You know, if something if, if you if you hear about something fixing to happen, I always I go to Twitter because you're gonna. You can jump on a feed right there and find out about some. I'm kind of a news junkie, so uh -huh. I like to. But I do, I do dabble in. In I'll, I, I have, I agree with what you said about Facebook, uh, but I, I've grown weary of Facebook just simply because of the. Um, there's just so much minutia on there, stuff that just doesn't, and you have to police it, and you have to kind of, you know, and and then um, uh, I. The marketers that just populate across all the platforms out there, which we're all connected to, to each other, and they just, you know, if you're if if you're over here and then you go back over here and you see the same stuff, some of that it, it's really rampant on Facebook, and it's uh -huh. it is starting it's starting to permeate into the Google Plus platform, which is good. I'm, I like to see that growth, but Google will, you know, you can you can adjust your circles on the Google Plus platform 
so you can identify, okay, these are my social media friends, right? And you can have that little community and just deal with them and you can move people up. Uh, I just, you know, I, I, I still, because of my writing and trying to get my, my, my voice out, I use many of the platforms for that. But I get my most interaction through Twitter. I enjoy that the most. Yeah, I'm right there with you with Facebook. I mean, I, I mean, I think people are disappointed when they connect to me in Facebook because they'll see uh, pictures of my kids. I mean, because I was initially like, you know, I use Facebook for to connect with family and yep. and uh, and and that's and that's that's what you get from me on Facebook. Right? Yeah. You know, but there's nothing is, wrong with that. I, I don't I don't yeah. mind that part. That's that's kind of where I look at it from. I love to see that. I mean, that's you know, and then. Maybe you say something about your new business on there, but that's your personal life, and I I enjoy that part of Facebook. It's the right. fifteen billion this, and then there's a picture of Jim and his kids going to wherever. You know, right. it's like well, uh, so uh, well, you do a lot. I've done a lot of field. I've done a lot of purging on a lot of accounts, but a lot of purging on Facebook mm -hmm. because of that. You know, and it's just it's not necessarily that. I don't want to be friends with you. It's just that sometimes we, I just find we just don't really have anything in common. You know, I mean, it's just nothing there. There's no, there's no relationship there. Well, what I found on Facebook is that, you know, as more people that have been involved in social media get connected into me, they drown out everybody else because they're connected to everybody. They're, you know, they're, they're sending social signals back and forth, and so I, I really lose a lot of the, a lot of the content from people that people that I, you know, that actually have a, you know, personal relationship or whatever, and so. You know, so that diminishes the experience. I should probably, I should probably do some purging. <laughs> it gets, you know? it gets, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Walenska walking across the the Grand Canyon walk tightrope. Sometimes, you know, right. you never know where you where you need to balance. So, we're well, we're coming to the end. Uh, you got, you want to, you want to close out with any kind of statement or something? Uh, you got anything to say? Any other th thoughts that you might like to share? <laughs> I, not a one, but I, I appreciate this. I mean, this is the first, uh, this first, uh, you know, conversation that I've been able to, you know, to get on, and and uh, you know, I appreciate the, I appreciate the babysitters that took my kids so that I could, because my wife is in New York right now. But uh, but yeah, and I appreciate you inviting me to do it. It was a lot of fun. The time kind of, you know, just went by. You're a good, good interviewer. Well, it's it's a it's an honor it's an honor to have you, Jim. And I and I I didn't I didn't just say that at the top. I, I really enjoy engaging with Leaders West. There's all that's one of those go to sites. So you built and I'm not I'm not alone to that. We I know that there's some people out there looking that that share that same passion and 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 go to your your platform. You built a pretty good successful thing there. So congratulations. And I want to I want to honestly and sincerely thank you for taking the time out to to join us. Um, but that that is kind of wrapping it up and and to everybody out there listening i want to i want to say thanks uh um and as always you can catch these replays on our youtube channel and they should be live shortly after the close of this show um we will return on july 9th with our guest who is andrew jenkins of art company and we're going to be andrew and i are going to be discussing strategy um if uh you remember what I always say, um, um, you know your brand better than anybody. So until July 9th, thank you. And once again, Jim, thank you. We'll see you. Good night.